Hello, I thought today and next week I would do a little series on American malt whiskey. Um, partly because I just haven't done a whole lot with the category yet on this here channel. Partly because uh, with Scotch and Irish and Japanese and every everywhere else in the world whiskeys going up in price, it seemed like it would be worth taking a look at what, uh, what the U.S. is up to. Uh, and also just, I had a, I have a bunch of stuff lying around and it's a good chance to taste it. All right. So, uh, here we're going to, we're going to hit some classics. Um, all right. This is an old Binny's pick. Stranahan. Haven't heard a whole lot from Stranahan's, uh, in, uh, Denver recently, but they are still around. They still have this silly, um, like tin copper i don't know what this is for what it's kind of charming i don't know what it's for uh and uh this is a binny's pick i bought a couple of years ago now full disclosure i work for binny's i sell wine for them i don't think the spirits folks really care uh what i have to say about a long since sold out barrel pick they did years ago but uh you know you just be aware, like my paycheck is coming from these people. Um, <clears throat> and then that is going to be warm up for two bottles of McCarthy's from Clear Creek Dist Distillery. Now this is one I already uh, opened and talked about and said I would not review. I will link that video up down below. And I'm going back to my word because I want this to be a warm up for this. Uh, this is McCarthy's uh, six-year-old PX Sherry Finished. And this is currently on sale. And pretty widely available, apparently. So that is the lineup. Let's get some, uh, some notes on the table. Uh, Stranahan's first. Okay. Stranahan's. Uh, what's... what's uh, Rocky Mountain single malt whiskey cast strength. This is bottled at 54.59% 4, 4 alcohol. It is a single barrel, 15-1756. Uh, there you go. Um, now it is entirely malt, American oak. Um, and this has been around not as long as McCarthy's or, or um, uh, St. George. Those are really the, the OGs of American single malt, but it's been around a while. On the nose. I mean, it really annoys me because um, it's a little bit stereotypical, but it, 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 and I don't want to give the easy description, but this really smells like something halfway in between, like, you know, Kentucky and the southern Scottish Highlands. That's kind of... That's kind of how this is rolling. So tons of vanilla, like you were getting, you know, America. The the F one fifties are rolling, and the oak is in town. Vanilla, sawdust, dried cherry, little hints of ginger. It's not really getting in the way. So sometimes when I get ginger on malt whiskey, it's something I worry about. Here it's just a little bit of a background note, giving some color. Um, but then you pay attention a little bit more and you get like these massive, like orange notes, um, which remind you, Hey, this is hundred percent malted barley, buddy. Uh, yeah, lots of just Grand Marnier, um, chocolate orange, you know, the little chocolate oranges that you smash against the table and to break them open. That's, ha that's happening. Um, some bergamot stuff, really more like like stewed uh, Earl Grey, like Earl Grey tea doubling down on the bergamot. That's kind of what what's happening here. It doesn't really smell like you just you know vatted um, 
uh, uh, some bourbon into a Glen Goyne or something. But that's approaching the kind of territory we're getting into there. But it's much more synthetic than that. In, in a good way. I mean, I mean, like, there's... It feels like a whole. It feels complete. Lots of honey. Um, what kind of honey? Just some nice wildflower honey. Um... Some kind of dried fruit in there too. Uh, not, not raisin. It's it's almost more. Um, the heck is that? Um, almost some dried apricot in there. Some grassiness. Yes. Again. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like dried grass. Uh, so a big old clump of dried grass. Apple cinnamon. Oh yes, apple cinnamon. Um, there used to be a, a, like an apple cinnamon cereal, and I can't think of the name of it right now. But that cereal, that's that's definitely here. Even a little bit of cardamom, like some uh, freshly crushed cardamom. It's a it's a tricky one to kind of wrap my brain around because it's not. Like it's in some ways this is simple. The the range of flavors I am getting is pretty darn narrow. This is not throwing hundreds of different notes at me, but that's not to say it's not bringing a fair bit to the table. There's some depth here on the palate. I mean, you can absolutely tell this is young. Um, it's very, very, very oily, very viscous. Um, the mouth length, the the, the way, uh, the sort of distance in my mouth that travels back, how far the event goes back. It's, you know, it's, it's fine, but it isn't epic. Um, but for what it is, for what it's trying to do, this is... It's pretty, it's pretty perfect. Like, uh, or put it this way, I don't know where you would take this and go from here. Um, much more grassy on the palate. Wow, especially on the back end than it is on the nose. Really, what this makes me think of is a lot of the other American single malts I tried like 15 years ago. Um, yeah, like, 10, 15 years ago, like that that second generation after McCarthy's, after St. George, um, before you started to get more sophisticated efforts, more attention to, and people were just throwing things into, you know, fresh oak and stuff. Um, it reminds me of a lot of the flavors that were happening with those, but unlike with a lot of those, it works. Like it's, it feels like a coherent thing rather than a mess of like grass and leaves and you know um oak and just unhappy things um apple cinnamon vanilla earl grey again lots of lots of orange things again Honey again. So a lot of stuff falling from the nose. Black pepper. Um, kind of a topsoil note, like a like a wet, muddy topsoil thing. Um, and then yeah, all that kind of rolls into this kind of interesting bitter grass thing on the back end. Like it's a mix of dried grass and like fresh grass. And it absolutely, like, just just screams to me that kind of second generation American single malt category. But again, this it basically works. Is the difference um, Hershey's Kisses on this um, cardamom again? Yeah, it's it's simple in the sense that it has a relatively limited number of things that it's trying to do, but it basically nails all those things. 
So yeah, it's 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 simple but interesting. I'm gonna give this a couple squirts of water and we shall move on. So it's what 55-ish percent. So I'm gonna need at least four. I'm sorry I'm not drinking it out of this uh, tin, whatever it is. It's charming. I don't know what this is for, but it's, I guess it's distinctive, you know. It's going to need an extra squirt. And we, sh we shall come back to it. All right, moving on. Uh, to the McCarthy's. This is a single barrel cast strength bottle of McCarthy's Oregon Single Malt, picked by the Party Source way back in the day. I think this was the first McCarthy's pick ever, um, uh, which is very, very cool. So this is, I have treasured this bottle. I popped it with, uh, with Steve's passing. And this is rather special because as something, you know, uh, this is barrel 374 bottled um, October 3rd, 2013. Mm -hmm. This would have been, you know, a batch that Steve McCarthy distilled um, himself, kind of going towards the last of his of his um, distilling days. So, I am extremely lucky to have this. I'm going to savor every single drop of this, and um, yeah, and I really wanted to break this out again to kind of see, uh, compare and contrast these two bottlings. What I really want is a fresh bottle of McCarthy's cast strength, but unfortunately it's, we, we live in Illinois and Southern has decided that they don't want to distribute Clear Creek stuff here. And I really, I don't understand why. Southern, just, just give us our Clear Creek back, please. Please. Okay, 49.9% ABV on this bad boy. And the nose is just... It's completely distinctive. It's it's so. Um, it smells like Isla, but it also smells like nothing, nothing on Isla. Uh, so you you're getting like the the peat, the campfire, um, some slight floral hints. You know, if you're looking at this askance and you're not paying attention, you might mistake it for a Beaumont or something. Hints of like sea air, like sea breeze. But then like, so the special thing about this is, is the, uh, what, three years, it's three years old in Oregon Oak, uh, Gariana. And that makes a difference. Um, I can never think of good descriptions for Oregon Oak. Like the best I can come up with, and this is gonna sound stupid, is like sweet mud? like dessert mud like I, I know that like in, in the past i've described um especially mainland peated whiskeys as being a little bit barnyardy a little bit uh, like you know smelling like a little bit of uh mud and manure and like pigs wandering around and that kind of that not that kind of thing this is not that this is more like you know grandma took it upon herself, you know, she, she's, you know, going a little, little out of her head, just took it upon herself to just dig up some mud, you know, after a rainstorm, dig up some mud in the backyard, throw it in a pot along with, and make a dessert out of it. That's like, that's the character of this. That's the best I can do. I'm sorry. Um, it's, it's just so delicate at the same time tea um russian caravan tea so you're getting like some uh different tea notes there's some lapsang in there white pepper there are actually some medicinal hints in there too so so some you know lefroig style old bandages coffee grinds those flowers the the bomori kinds of flowers just hanging out in the background And yet, despite all these kind of like grungy, dirty things, it smells just so clean and and like balanced and delicate and 
I mean, it's it smells like 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 an o, an eau de vie maker produced it. It smells like an eau de vie of peat, if that makes sense. Um, I love this stuff. If you can't if you can't tell on the palate. Get out of here. Um, where do I start? Uh, okay, let's start with dessert mud again. Um, dessert mud, grandma's dessert mud. You know, you know, slightly dementia-driven dessert mud with a big old halo of peat smoke, seawater, bandages, cocoa nibs, and like. Campfire remains. So burned twigs, burned leaves. Cinnamon, allspice. Russian caravan tea again. Clove. The coffee grinds thing. But it, th those notes are not what really makes this special for me. It's the 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 form of how this kind of delivers what it's got. It's like when I think about, you know, classical spirits, you know, whether we're dealing with whiskeys, brandies, rums, whatever, I think of something that arrives with some fruitiness, some, uh, you know, sweetness, even though there's no actual sugar there. And it like, and then as you kind of, uh, taste through it, maybe some spicy notes arrive, and then on the back end, you get a, a dry, bitter uh, character. This is not quite doing that. It's um, it, it's kind of doing its own thing, but it works. This arrives on the front end, aromatic, spicy. Um, floral, slightly floral. And then it goes, as it goes back toward in, in the back of your mouth, it gets uh, muddy and it gets kind of bittersweet. Um, and, it, and the finish on the back is where the kind of bittersweetness comes in. It's it's um, it's very special. Like it 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 the closest points of comparison I, I would come up with would be like eau de vies or you know, unaged brandies, unaged rums. Um, God, this is good. It's, <laughs> it's as delicious as it is just fun to think about how this is doing what it's doing. Um, Tremendous. I want to say, I, you know, it's whiskey, but I want to say eau de vie of, of bar, peated barley. Because um, that's kind of what it tastes like. I'm going to give this like two and a half squirts. One and a half squirt, I'm sorry. And we'll come back. Um, all right, and now we move on to the, uh, of this trio, the one you can buy, McCarthy's six-year-old Oregon single malt. So even though this previous bottle was younger, it was actually distilled sooner. Uh, this was uh, distilled, um, I'm not sure exactly when, it, so, so bottled um, in September, September 8th, 22 age six years, it would have been, what, distilled in 2016 sometime? Um, and uh, anyway, so initially matured in, in Garyana again, and then finished in a uh, Peter Jimenez sherry cask. 56.13% um, alcohol. They really like their decimals, <laughs> these American single malt producers. All right, let's, uh, let's see what we got here. And I am darn excited to try this because it's the first um, 
new McCarthy's I've had in a long time. So, um, initial impression is this is actually more conventional as a, as a, you know, peated Isla style malt whiskey. Yeah, you hand this to me blind and I might, I am much more likely to think this is, you know, just a, some kind of Sherry Bowmore, um, Kilhoman maybe comes to mind. So you're getting peat, uh, like chocolate fudge sauce. Raisins, lots of raisins. Uh, dried cherries. Seaside campfires, kind of intermarried with the peat. So we're keep, keeping kind of that, that, that twiggy peat theme happening from the, the previous bottle. Yeah, I mean, this could be, like, just nosing this. This could well be like a, a Bowmore or, or a Kilhoman or uh, it doesn't really present like a Kalila, but you, you, see what you see what I mean. Like this is much more Isla Scotch than, than uh, the previous McCarthy's was. But then you start to pay more attention and you start to get those aggressive like cinnamon cardamom notes a little leathery, hints of Lapsang Souchong. And yeah, my beloved like sweet dessert mud thing. So more conventional, but there's, you know, there's depth here. And in particular, like this, this is giving me more depth than a lot of just like wood hammered, wine cask hammered, peated scotches that I've had in the last couple of years. Figs, cafe mocha, prunes, white pepper. Couple of flowers. So, so, so there's, that, again, that kind of bowmore through line. On the palate. I'm torn. I, I'm torn. Because, yeah, I mean, on the one hand, this is more conventional. Like, the, the uh, this, it, you know, it, it reminds me of a lot of what kilhoman has been doing recently, of a lot of, well, the, what the rest of Isla's been doing recently. But it's really well done. Um, very ashtray-driven, which I like. Raisins, figs, man, the PX is kicking. It's not, this isn't like sort of the cloyingly sweet side of PX. This is more the the uh, kind of ashy burned raisins kind of side of, of PX. Swisher sweets. Um, one of my, the, the, the moment I first came up with, with, with Swisher sweets smoke as like a, uh, just a note for shared whiskey was like, aha, I got it. Like that is, that describes so much shared whiskey I've had in a while. Swisher Sweets. Um, but Russian Caravan tea, that's still in play. That little hints of like oolong and lapsang, that's there. Pete. Twi like twiggy peat, um, campfirey peat, and a little bit of ashtray peat, um, sea salt, cinnamon sticks. Um, little little medicinal thing, little iodine, little old bandage, and yes, kind of just just peeking its head out on the back end, dessert mud. Um, and it is like compared to the, the McCarthy's, the pre, well, the previous McCarthy's, it is much drier on the back end. This is much more classically built. Arrives fruity, finishes dry. Um, English breakfast tea, black pepper. And like, 
you know, muddy twiggy peat. It's very good. It's it's really good. I mean, I'm torn about the the identity of this. This is like just kind of more normal. I'm not sure how I, how I feel about that, but at the at the same time, it's just I feel like it's doing what a lot of these over woodied, over wined um, Isla whiskeys have been doing for the last couple of years, and it's just doing it doing a better job of it, um, which is impressive. Um, a couple squirts of water for this. At least four, right? Probably five. Four and three quarters. Okay, let's go through these again with water. Uh, my notes are all out of order. Okay, here we go. Back to the strand hens. Um, on the nose, now with water. Even more kind of like uh, woody and sawdusty and there's some maple syrup creeping out now. Vanilla, dessert cherry, like fresh dessert cherry. I don't know, like it, I'm gonna say right now, even without trying on the palate, this is not in the same league as these two. Like these are just playing in a different, in a different level than, than this. But this thing in the glass in front of me is really hard not to like. And I don't want you to get the wrong impression for me just not scoring it as highly as as the next two monsters on the palette a little bit more wood tannin uh, grip on the finish but otherwise it's Pretty much the same. Um, it's grassy, it's sawdusty, vanilla, chocolate, orange. Lots of honey. It's tricky, this one, because I'm not going to give this a big old skyrocketing stellar score. I'm just not. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's simple, but it's delicious and there's real depth. Um, I'm going to call this an 85 out of a hundred, but it's an 85 I want to, to own that I'm very happy to own. Like this is, uh, just to give you some explanation, but way, way back in the day, I used to run tastings, right? Um, I would have some friends over, we do a lineup. And the first whiskey you put up was always a really tricky to pick because you couldn't give them some fire snorting, super complex monster. They just, you're not, they couldn't taste it at that point. You needed something to warm them up. But you needed something better than some, you know, a, a basic, um, you know, crappy whiskey or whatever. You needed something that was going to challenge them a little. A little just kind of set them up like just kind of uh but not you know blow them out of the water that's what this is like this little 85 point whiskey can absolutely play that kind of role or to use another analogy think of this as like you're doing a set of squats and your last warm-up is like a single at 80 percent that's what this is this is this is the last single you do before your work sets and it's darn useful to have something like this around. So uh, 85 points, but worth it beyond that score. All right, uh, moving on to the 2013 iteration of McCarthy's Gas Strength. 
God, I would love to head to head this with a contemporary version of. Oh well. On the nose. I just, I love this stuff. It's it's so special. Like it 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 doesn't. Not only does it not smell like anything else, it doesn't behave like anything else. It's it's hard to describe. I mean, it's it's muddy and sweet and peaty, and it's but it, at the same time, it's so just gorgeous and delicate. And so, not, so not a whole lot of development um, after adding water. Maybe a little bit more peppery. That's about it. I mean, it's it's great. It's eau de vie of Isla. And I, I love it. On the palette, here we go. If I put my critic hat on, and I am wearing my, head, my critic hat, I can start to kind of pick holes in this a little bit. A little, just little teeny tiny holes. Um, it's delicious and it's delicate and it's beautiful, but you can still tell like it's a hair bit young. It likes to hang out in the in the in the front of the mouth. Most what's especially when you add water. I would actually drink this neat. Most what's happening in the front. You know the finish. As, as much as I love the form of this and in that like bittersweet intense finish it's it could be just a little bit longer maybe but um, those that is just poking holes like this is a fantastic whiskey um, cheers to Steve for making this stuff Eighty nine points. Eighty nine points. Not perfect, but God, it's good. Um, yeah, it's just so direct and yes, it's simple, but uh, it's it's simple in a deeper way than the Stranahan's is. I mean, if you if you study theology, you know that simple things can be the most difficult to understand a lot of the time. Um, and I will leave it at that. The less theology talk on uh, different spirits, the better. All right, and now the one that is actually relevant for us to review, the uh, PX finish. Now with water. Oak. So with finished whiskeys, I never know quite what's gonna happen when I add water. A lot of the time the finish just drops off. Sometimes the finish like becomes more intense, it actually becomes oakier, and here it's kind of become yeah, more oaky. So I'm getting lots of old furniture, lots of vanilla, the swisher sweets, the the like the, like burned raisins, freshly ground pepper. It's a very good impression of the like the the current fashions in Isla with the super intense PD you know wine cask finished PD stuff. It's doing that. It's doing an impression of that, but it's kind of doing it better. <laughs> Sorry, Isla. All right. Um, on the palate. on the palate with water it's kind of the opposite story suddenly the oak just drops off yeah except for some like vanilla fudge stuff happening kind of in the finish what I'm left with is just 
kind of this just clean, perfect impression of Isla. Yeah, so smoky campfire PD. There's a fair bit of like vanilla, of the vanilla fudge thing happening on the finish, but it's just elegant and beautiful. It's a it's a clean. Uh, uh, it's a great example of young Isla whiskey. Um, it is extremely good, and yeah, it beats a lot of those young over over oaked uh, Iliox at their own game. Gun to my head, do I like the the old, un, 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 uh, unfinished McCarthy's more? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, it's I find it a hair better, and it, it's just for me, it's it's more special, it's more unique. But in the in the game that uh, peated whiskeys are now currently playing, this um, even though it's price, I, I think this is what 120, 130 in most places. This is measuring up to a lot of young Isla whiskeys at that price. Um, I'm going to give this 88 points. Uh, if you like this style, and you know if you do or not, you will like this. But, 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 it is not my favorite thing on the table. Cheers to Steve. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next video when we will do more American malts. Uh, sorry, some scores again. 85, 89, 88. Bye.